Good morning, everybody. It is 5 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday. Hump day. Hump day. That means that half the week is gone and half the week is left. That means that there's no turning back. It's a point of no return. That's okay, because when you look into the future, the next couple of days, it gets better. Because Thursday is going to just come and go, and then Friday will be here. And Friday is a good day, because on Fridays, you know that there's going to be a Saturday. And Saturday is the one day that you have out of the week where it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because yesterday is gone. That work week is over. No matter how tumultuous, how terrible, how horrifying that work week had been, it's finished. And on Saturday, you realize that tomorrow is Sunday. and You don't have to go to work. And so that's the one day that you have where your worries are only what you make of them. Sunday, on the other hand, is a worry that you have to go back to work on Monday. We'll get to that later. Today, 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 we are going to talk about solid state versus tube amps on the Neumann. Now, you might say, look, these are reference class headphones. Why would you ever test them on tube amps? Because they're not really reference class headphones. Come on, let's just be honest with each other. Anybody who says that the Neumanns are great reference class headphones needs to actually sit down and listen to them and compare them. They're not excellent at reference class headphones. They miss the frequency range. They miss the mark. They don't give enough detail, there's not enough separation, there's not enough depth, there's not enough sound stage. Uh, they roll off the highs and the lows, they scoop out the mids. You get kind of this weird S-curve. It's not even an S-curve. It's a, it's, it, it's a new uh, shape. And people who study geometry, geometrists, is, is that what they call it? Mathematicians, should go to Neumann and say, you have solved a key issue. We have never reached this. We've never seen such a mathematical problem before. This is astounding. This could be the solution. This curve that Neumann created for these headphones could be the solution to the dark energy problem of the universe. And if you don't know what it is, it's rather fascinating. Check it out on YouTube. This curve that you've created on this pair of headphones could possibly help us reach world peace sounds ridiculous of course it is uh which is why it's also ridiculous to say that the neumanns are fantastic reference class headphones for mixing and mastering they're not i don't mix i don't master i just listen and i can tell you right now uh if i was somebody who was looking for detail on headphones i would move on i would I, first of all i would balk at play, paying 500 dollars for a pair of headphones that doesn't even give me the details and second, I would laugh at the face of anybody who would say, who would tell me, these are the best headphones ever. And we'll get to that person at the end of this video. Don't worry. I have, my war against that shill has just begun. I have yet to start commenting about his bullshit. Excuse the language, but that's what it's turning out. You will find out today, at the end of this video, if I remember, why I just said bullshit. The BS word. Yes, you know, I try not to use cuss words. I try not to be a offensive in my videos uh but today i might slide a little bit and when i am when you hear it i hope you will agree that perhaps i had excuse to do that but for now let's go to the test what do i have i've got the monolith thx and i've got the dark voice and why did i pick these two well the thx is readily available so is the dark voice that's number one number two i wanted to check the cleanest amplifier you can possibly get. Now you could say, why don't you use the, the 789? Because I'm testing the, the THX, so it doesn't really matter. And second, it doesn't really literally matter because there, there is no discernible difference between those two amplifiers. And certainly no real difference that the Neumanns are going to pick up because they just are not capable of picking up details of that nature. So I've got the monolith, and then I got the dark voice. The dark voice because it is, once again, readily available between $200 and $300, depending where you buy it. It's available on Mastro. You can roll both tubes. This is a powerful amp. It is fantastic. If you want to get into tubes, tube amps, the Dark Voice is the place to start. I would recommend, and we haven't done a Dark Voice review yet, but let me tell you this. If you're, if you're thinking about getting to tube amps, skip all that other gray area between $50 to $250. Forget all the other amplifiers that you see on Amazon. Forget everything else that people tell you. 
Don't go to any higher price than the dark voice. Just get the dark voice. That's my recommendation because the dark voice is literally that good. And the most important thing about the dark voice, in my opinion, is the fact that you can roll the tubes. And that's the real joy of tube amps. Yeah, you get that warmth and that distinctive sound signature of tubes, but you get to roll the the tubes. And they're, that's the that's where you get to experiment and really find out how sound changes with different components. It's a great way to learn. Okay, now we're done. How is the dark voice connected to my computer, by the way? Well, I have the JDS Labs um, DAC, LDAC, which is just a DAC module, by the way. Fantastic, clean, no distortion. It's the same DAC chip, I think, that they use in the uh, Element amplifier DAC combo which, by the way, I love. So that's what we're going to do. And let's start where we start always, with Hay... I almost said Haim, no. With Mountains by Hans Zimmer. I currently have the monolith plugged in. And let's start. Volume is now on the monolith at negative 10.5. That, that's not really going to help me because the Dark Voice doesn't have a digital display or really any way of telling what the actual volume is. It's just kind of notched along. I doubt that there was any scientific basis for the people who make Dark Voice to have notches on the knob to tell you what the percentage is. Whatever. We'll play it by ear. So here's the first 40 seconds, and I'm going to skip to halfway. Here comes the crescendo with the organ and all the instruments. Smooth. Very smooth. So I, I can't fault the Neumann for being so smooth. It's a It's a... It's a great, smooth, buttery, smooth headphone. It, it, whatever slick stuff that Neumann did to it to make it this smooth, it should be patented, put into a bottle, and sold on store shelves as a spread on your toast. It's that good. Uh, but for listening, not for critical stuff. All right, now let's switch to the... Uh, Dark voice, and now I've switched to the El Daco. Here we go. And I've got the volume knob at noon. You can hear that, you know, tubey buzz in the background, which is really neat. If you've never heard it, you will be surprised. At first, you'll think, oh, that doesn't sound good. Give it time. And I've given the tubes about 30 minutes to warm up, 25 minutes to warm up. You need to give tubes time to warm up. It's got this much better kind of meteor bass response. It doesn't change the bass response of the headphone. It doesn't automatically give it a better frequency range. But there's... It just bleeds and melds the the bases, the bass frequencies together, and it makes it sound more robust. It's much more loose than on the solid state. That's what tubes do. They don't tighten things up. They just kind of muddle things. That's the whole pro the point of tubes. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to halfway. Here comes the crescendo. So there's a greater rumble in the headphone with the tube than there is with the solid state. You lose out a lot of detail with the other frequency, with the other instruments that are playing in, and the overwhelming response on the tube is that organ. And it just, it, you feel that resonance from that organ. 
it drowns out most of the other frequencies. And if you want to feel as if you are in the music and you are just being surrounded by, by sound, then a tube amplifier, a good tube amplifier, like a dark voice, is one way you can achieve that. Now you, there's many ways you can achieve it, but, but one of the ways is, one of the ways to cheat, is to get a headphone that has angle drivers for a couple reasons. One, that reduces fatigue on your ears and listening. And two, if you have angle drivers, sometimes what the headphone is designed to do with the angle drivers is to imitate a wider sound stage or make it sound as if the that the frequency is coming, the sound, the music is coming around you, not just laterally from the sides. Because the because the headphone is on your head, obviously. And so that's that's one way. And the other thing you can do is use a good powerful tube amp like the dark voice because it does muddle the frequency range a little bit. And instead of getting those precise hits, it feels as if the sound is coming all over. It, the precision is lost with tubes. And that's why I say it's cheating a little bit. And it's not something that'll happen every time because it depends considerably on the on the song that you're listening to. It depends on the headphone. It depends on the DAC somewhat. And it depends how powerful your amplifier is, your tube amplifier is. So you can, in fact, achieve that sort of total being surrounded, your head is swimming around or with sound uh, type of thing. And that's one way to kind of cheat into it instead of going up exponentially into, into the headphone buying experience and, and, and putting down... Now, what's, what's a headphone that supposedly does that? The Focal Stelia and Utopia. I think they do that. I think that's their marketing shtick. That it makes it sound as if sound is everywhere. What's another one? I know Sennheiser. I think, is it the 800 or is it the 820? That's supposed to give you this sort of total immersion experience. Uh, the Meze Empyrean, it does, in fact, kind of give you that sensation. What else? Nothing else is really jumping out at me, but I do know that there are a few other headphones that are built to make you experience that. Whether they do it or not is a separate issue. But if you want to have a similar type experience, you can try to cheat with the way that I've described. Will it work every time? No, I doubt it. You may not even notice the difference initially, but I have. I've, you know, especially if you tube roll, you can kind of mimic that experience. Okay, so what I want to do, now that I've wasted your time talking about that, let's go back to about halfway and let's listen to the crescendo and how different it actually is between the tube and the solid state. Here we go. Switching to the monolith. So what the monolith reproduces is leaner. Leaner bass, a little bit more detail for sure because it, the way the tubes work, they lose out on, on a lot of that detail because they meld the frequencies. And it just sounds kind of blah when you compare it to the tube. So what the tubes have done in that portion of the song is when the, all the instruments come in, the organ is supposed to be the central instrument around which all the others surround it that's a stupid way of saying it the organ when it comes in it's a primary instrument all everything else just kind of supports that frequency that the organ is sending out your very good headphones and amplifiers should be able to tell you exactly what's going on everywhere it, there should be no muddiness and if there is muddiness it should be so irrelevant 
because the organ is the primary player in, the, in this. What the monolith does, what the solid state does, is it kind of gives you a little bit of that sensation. The Neumanns are not very good at bringing out detail, so you don't get the full detail. You get part of the detail. You get, I don't know, 80% of the detail maybe, if I were to put a random, unscientific number on it. Now go to the, to the dark voice. What the dark voice does, it says, 80%? Huh, I'll see your 80% and bring you 20%. It just kind of, blah, I don't care. Dark voice doesn't care. It's not there to bring you precision. It's there to bring you a little bit more meat, right? It's like a vegan versus somebody who is a red, red blooded American, and we eat our steak every day. I don't know why I'm Southern, but Northern people eat steak. They eat steak every day, and that's their, that's their God-given right under the Constitution of the United States is to eat steak beef. I, I don't want no beef, baby. I want a big stack of beef. And that's the dark voice. The dark voice goes, look, uh, I don't really care about this whole lean frequency thing. I'm just going to do what I do best, which is bring you boom. And that's what happens when you get to the middle of the song with the organ. It takes that organ frequency and says, I will one-up you 10 times. And that organ frequency becomes muddy and loud and a little distorted because of the two, but it doesn't take away from the pleasure of the song. It just elevates it and boosts the bass. And what it does with the bass boost, essentially, is it muddies everything else. And so the detail that you had with the other instruments is completely drowned out. You still hear all those other instruments, for the most part, but you can't really identify what those instruments are. You can't really find them precisely where are they on the sound stage it's harder to do that and it, it they become in some respects a little peaky because it does a weird curve on the sound signature it just adds something and it takes away something because that now you are immersed in a totally different representation of the song and your ears if you go back and forth your ears are going i i, I don't what, what what just happened on the one hand i was listening to it on the solid state and it sounded smooth and precise ish because of the neumann and then i switched to the solids uh, on the tube amp and uh, it feels like i'm missing a lot that's right you are that's what the tubes do Tubes may not be great for every song. Interstellar, Mountains, uh, it depends on your preference. If you want to hear every instrument that Hans Zimmer orchestrated into this piece, then Tube Amp is not for you. But if you want to feel the impact of the organ, then a Tube Amp really is going to be able to bring that out. Just elevate it. It's not going to be precise. It's not going to give you detail but it's going to give you that emotion that two bams introduce. Let's go to Hey, I Want You Back, and I have the monolith plugged in. Here we go. Fairly smooth tonality. When it's just her and the guitar slowly strumming it's good vocal is fan it's really smooth but when they start adding complexity more vocalists drum guitar piano yeah the voice kind of loses its its sweetness the headphones simply can't work with complex songs and this is not a complex song there's not a whole lot going on with it it's not your. It's not like you're sitting there listening to a, a fifty-piece orchestra. It, it's a handful of things here, and Neumann simply can't cut it. Let's switch to the dark voice. And immediately what you realize is there a greater emphasis on the guitar strings. They have much more reverberation. Her voice 
is not as smooth. But there's a, a hint of warmth to her voice. It's hard to explain. On the solid state, the voice sounded more lean, more analytical. On the dark voice, that lower bass frequency bleeds into the vocal frequency that she's singing. And it, it's a really smooth transition from one to the other because there's a bleed into both. Very nice, soothing sound. Very imprecise representation of the song, meaning if you wanted to hear the drums, the guitar, the piano, the vocalist separately with distinction, the tubes are not going to do that for you. But if you want to really just immerse yourself in warmth, it, it does a great job. If you are sensitive to peaky voices, the dark voice might be a good alternative to a solid state amplifier where it kind of elevates the bass and kind of bleeds the frequencies together and it sounds darker more meaty and it loses the lean analytical critical response that solid state tends to have more clinical representation of the song and how how would you listen to it well if you have a pair of kind of Easy listening headphones. Let's assume that you have the LCD two closed, which have good soundstage for closed back headphones. Very good soundstage, but kind of a laid back representation. Uh, would you be able to use it on the dark? Yeah, and you probably get a slightly more laid back experience. I, I think what's going to happen with a with a, a headphone like that because it's planar magnetic and planar magnetics allegedly don't do absolutely great with tubes. It, I'm not convinced about that finding from audiophiles. I think that planar, planar magnetics do fine with tubes, but that's my opinion. Uh, is that because that, that headphone already has a very laid back response, the tube doesn't add much to it. It may simply make the sound, the song more or less detailed. Yeah, that, that's, that's an oxymoron. It makes the song less detailed and therefore, my takeaway from the pleasure of it, if you already have a laid back headphone. Now, if you have a more analytical headphone, more clinical headphone, you plug it into tube amp, all of a sudden you're going to hear something more laid back. And that might be the sweet spot for you. You might sit there and go, oh, that sounds so much more soothing to me. Because it takes the, the analytical peaky approach of the headphone itself that's natural, especially in combination with the solid state amp, and it rounds things off, and it bumps up the bass, and it muddies the waters a bit with the frequency, and it sounds more relaxing. That would probably be the better combination of the two, uh, between a headphone that is naturally re orchestrated, created, tuned to be relaxing, versus a pair of headphones that is designed to be more analytical. I think you're going to hear a better difference if, with the analytical headphone with the two. That's just my opinion. So with respect to this song, I think I said all I needed to say. It, 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 the vocal is more muddy with the tube, but it adds more meat to it. It, it adds a, a bit of grittiness to it and becomes a darker sounding headphone because the bass is elevated and it bleeds into the mid frequencies. Let's do Flight from the City, which is piano centric. And I have the dark voice on. The micro detail of the of the guy leaning into the bench comes out fine. I'm listening for that electric buzz that's supposed to happen in the background. I'm trying to find out when it comes in. Here, this is where it comes in. About 32, 33 seconds of the song. And it's barely audible. Now it's a little bit more audible. Not particularly precise. It, it leads into the other frequencies. The piano is heavy. 
meaning I hear less of the piano strike itself and more of the resonance of the piano. And as I said before, many times whenever I listen to this song is when the pianist hits down on the keys, you hear that thunk, thunk, thunk. Well, with the dark voice, you don't really hear the thunk as much as you hear the reverberation from that thunk. It's almost like you put your head next to the piano and the guy is playing the piano. It's like, oh my God, oh, wow, that's, that's a little, I wasn't expecting that. It's not precise representation of the piano. It's not analytical by any stretch of the imagination. Much darker sounding, and some people may like it, some people will hate it. People who love piano are going to say, no tubes. I can't listen to it on the tube because it doesn't give a true representation. <clears throat> Excuse me. It doesn't give a true representation of the piano. Other people who just want a more robust sound and want to feel that reverberation are going to like the tube with the piano. Okay, let's switch to the monolith. Ugh. So, I got a headache. The Neumann with the solid state with this song, what they do is it adds this hollowness to the music, to the, to the piano frequency, and immediately testing between the, the dark voice and the solid state, it, it shows the big difference here. Let me listen for that uh, buzzing sound real quick. Yeah, the, the buzzing comes out a little bit cleaner on the solid state. But the whole song is just hollow. There's no meat to it. There's no real emphasis to it. There's no pleasure to it. It, it, it. The piano is represented incredibly poorly. With the dark voice, what happened is that the piano, because it was elevated and darker, it gave you that much more meaty approach to it, not accurate. But with the solid state in the Neumann, it's not accurate either. It's just, it goes the other direction completely, and the, the piano sounds awful. It, it, there's this hollowness to the piano frequency that makes it, how would I describe it? I would describe it like steel. Have you ever, have you ever put steel in your mouth and try to eat aluminum? Steel and aluminum are different things, but have you tried to eat aluminum before? If you have, if you ever bit into one of those aluminum wraps, you know, uh, Reynolds wraps, that's the that's what I feel these headphones do with this piano. It's like you're biting into aluminum. Don't do that, by the way. You, you're going to destroy your teeth and probably kill yourself. Uh, I'm not saying I've never done it, but that's what I'm telling you. Don't do it. From experience, it's not, it's not that good. That's the way I feel, which is it, it, it has a steely kind of really obnoxious representation of this song compared to the dark voice it, it changes completely you're in either case you're not getting a true accurate representation of the piano which one is more pleasurable to listen to the dark voice hands down no competition whatsoever let's do one last one uh let's do new light because it has a lot of micro detail and i have the monolith plugged in here we go. Let's switch to JDS Labs. Start again. Okay. 
more muddy, darker, less detail. So on this song, it's the opposite, where the solid state with the Neumann bring out the detail and they eh, fairly accurately represent the, the song and the frequency. The dark voice doesn't. The dark voice muddies things up so badly with this particular song that you lose out on the real purpose of the song, which is to show you all the details, the micro details, the different sounds and textures of the song, it all gets lost. And so you're sitting there listening to it on the dark voice going, what am I supposed to be listening to? What what is where's the dark where's the detail? You're not gonna find it. On the Neumann, leaner, more precise, and you are gonna be able to find the vast majority of the detail and the micro detail that is supposed to be in this song compared to the dark voice. The problem is that the that the Neumann just sound hollow with the solid state. With the dark voice, it sounds more robust, as I said in all the other ways previously. But it's inaccurate, and it for this particular song, I, I cannot say that the dark voice adds anything beneficial. It only muddies things up significantly. So there you go. It, it, it adds a reverberation consistently. The dark voice adds reverberation because of that lower frequency bump. Some people might like it, but on some songs, they're mastered in a particular way, created for detail, like Kazuki has done with New Light. It's made for detail, for the layers of stuff that he put in, the, the birds flapping, the sound of the wind, the rustling of grass, the footsteps, the sounds of children in the background. All of that goes in and is layered and textured. He wants you to listen to that stuff. The dark voice says, nah, I don't think so today. Takes away a lot of that detail. The solid state says, uh, I will give you that stuff without really distorting it because we're talking about the THX. And the Neumann's kind of represent it in the best way they can, which is hollow, steely, not particularly... Um, it's not particularly smooth with this song. There's some peakiness to it. And there's a loss of definition. There's so you can hear the different layers. You can hear the different instruments. And I'm going to count the wind and the footsteps as instruments. That's part of the song here. But there's not a whole lot of definition to them. But that's just the way that the headphones are. Okay, so that's the end of it. I don't think we need to go into any more testing of songs between solid state and tube on these headphones. It it it. it it's a good representation of what the tubes do. It's a good representation of what Solid State's going to do with the Neumann. If you're looking to buy the Neumann for studio use, you're not going to use tubes. Unless you're going to do it for fun. Or you have a particular purpose for using tubes. It's not going to happen. But if you're going to buy the Neumann because you, based upon what we've tested so far, my conclusion, not conclusion, but my findings... If you believe that the Neumann would be a good fit for easy listening, then, yeah, the two might be a good option for you to combine with the Neumann because they do have that, I'm not going to say flat because it does not have a flat frequency range, nor does it have a really neutral frequency range. It's got a steely frequency range, a hollow frequency range. If you want to, if you want to take a, a faulty headphone, which the Neumann is, it's got its own quirks, plug it into the dark voice, you're going to get a noticeably different response from a tube versus solid state. Uh, you may like it on some songs, you may hate it on some songs, you may like it on everything, you may hate it on everything. Can't tell you how it's going to work for you. But that's that's a that's a good combo, in my opinion, if you want to experiment uh, with eking out everything from the Neumann. Try it on a tube. Hopefully that has been helpful, maybe to some, maybe to maybe not. At all. I, I don't know. I'm going to do a Neumann versus EL8 comparison probably maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday. 
um, I want to be able to get that uploaded because I think that would probably be a good that would be a good comparison. Two different drivers, uh, cheaper, r relatively cheaper EL8, but at least the same, at at worst the same price is what I mean to say. Uh, let's see how how they compare. Uh, and why do I say that? Because, and this is the thing I said at the very beginning, because the uh, used car salesman in chief, the used car salesman of, of headphones, apparently uploaded a, a video in the last 24 hours. One of my subscribers commented yesterday afternoon and said that Zeos is at it again. He says on his latest video that the Neumanns are better than the Sennheiser HD820. And he put the word better in quotation. So I, so I assume that he's quoting <laughs> Zeos when Zeos says better. And I thought, really? I thought he already did. I thought Zeos already did an A20 review a, a while ago. I, uh, maybe I missed it. Maybe I got it wrong. Went on Zeos' um, channel, and sure enough, the A20 review was recently uploaded. Maybe I was mistaken. I saw somebody else's review. And I thought... <laughs> Boy, this guy's got some some gumption to keep doing this. And here's why. I'm not really going to a rant. I'm just going into an observation. So Zio says that the Ether C flows are not as good as the Neumann. Right? He says that the Neumann are the best headphone you can possibly buy in comparison to the Ether. He is not, he's not going to use the ethers anymore for critical listening because the Neumanns beat them. These are the headphones I'm going to use. So the ethers, which retail for $1,600 MSRP plus potentially shipping and taxes and everything, fall by the wayside. These are not acceptable headphones anymore. Now he says that the, that the Neumanns are better than the Sennheiser HD A20. What? This is $2,400 without tax and shipping. This is from Crutchfield. And by the way, if you've never been to Crutchfield, great customer service. Not cheap prices, by the way, but great customer service. Um, that's the MSRP, $2,400. So Zios is saying that the $500 pair of headphones is better than the $1,600 pair of headphones and it's better than the $2,400 pair of headphones. What 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 is the HD A20? If you if you don't really know, the H the A20 is the close back version of the 800s. That's it. So here's what Sennheiser did. Sennheiser created the HD 700. People hated it because it wasn't really truly Sennheiser sound. Fine. Then they created the HD 800. Now, I don't know exactly the period if they created the 700 before the 800 or they did it at the same time or vice versa. Whatever. They made the 800, and people didn't like the 800 because it had a weird frequency response. It had a lot of sibilance, and it had a weird peaks. Um, and people try to modify it and try to tame the peaks and create a better sound representation. Sennheiser thought, okay, clearly there's some issues with this particular tuning, and so they released the 800S several years ago. And the 800S addressed a lot of the issues with the original 800 driver. I have the 800S. I think it's a fantastic headphone. I have the 700. I think it's a great headphone. So what Sennheiser has done with the A20 is they've taken the 800S and put a glass back to it to make it close back. So it's a, it's a, it is a closed back 800S, essentially. Charging $2,400 for it is abominable. Abominable? Abominable. It's atrocious. It's stupid. It's anti-consumerism. It is, it, it's puffing yourself up a little too much, Sennheiser. You're selling the, you're selling the 800S for about $1,600, and you are adding many hundreds of dollars on top of that for putting a glass back on the headphone. Are you insane? The glass back does not require you to, to upcharge five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800. That, that's stupid. If you had created a new driver, then we could have a discussion, but I would still tell you that $2,400 for a pair of closed back headphones is stupid. Now, now, that aside, Zeos has now, what he's done, whether he knows it or he doesn't, 
whether he realizes or he doesn't, whether he gives a care or he doesn't. Here's what he's done. He said that the $500 Neumann is better than any reference class headphone, period. That's what he said. You can't get better reference class headphones. You, you literally cannot do much better. If And you can't really do any better. Because when you get into this type of price range and this type of finesse, and I assure you, when you get into the finesse of the likes of Ether-C and HDA20, these headphones are made by hand. They are specifically individually tuned, tested, approved, and shipped. You cannot get more care for a pair of headphones than with these two. <clears throat> so he's saying that a mass-produced headphone like the Neumann is better than these two types, the A20 and the Ether C. Okay, that's his opinion. Everybody is entitled to their personal opinion. No problem. But as a YouTube reviewer, as a reviewer who markets himself as a headphone reviewer, what have you just done? Because then, can, can anybody guess? Let's do the Socratic method. So Zio says the Neumann is the best reference class headphone, period. I'm, I'm summarizing his conclusions. That means there is no other headphone on the market that will ever compete with the Neumann. Now, it's entirely possible that a company will create a new pair of headphones that will outdo the Neumann. But in that case, remember a few videos ago, I, I, I did the mathematical uh, formula for you. A equals B, B equals C, therefore A equals C. Okay? A equals B, B is greater than C, C is greater than D, Consequently, A is greater than D, and A is greater than C. Does that make sense? To boil it down to normal terms, Zeos has said that the Neumanns are the best headphones you can buy for reference, period. That means he is not going to review any more headphones for reference. He's, he's, he's found the endgame headphone for reference. This is it. There can be no other. It's like Highlander. There can be only one. And he's found it. It's the $500 Neumann. <laughs> this $2,400 ridiculous headphone from Sennheiser. By the way, Sennheiser owns Neumann. This ridiculous $2,400 headphone from Sennheiser. Please. Please, the Neumann beat your ass. This is not even a comparison, says Zeos. I'm summarizing. Oh, Ether, Mr. Speakers, you know, you and I have a good, uh, we, we have a good relationship. You send me headphones every once in a while, I review them. You know, I don't have to pay anything. But I got to tell you, I got to tell you, uh, your hand-built headphones in California and San Diego, uh, not as good as the Neumann's. I'm sorry, you just can't do it for me. The $1,600 headphones that you charge for, uh, I can't beat the mass-produced $500 pair of headphones. So, hmm. Nice try. Maybe next time. But keep sending me headphones. If Zio Spintera uploads another video for any other reference quality, reference class, whether it's marketed as reference class or not, any other type of headphone for critical listening, his first statement, the first minute on the video should be, these cannot beat the Neumann. End of story. Do not buy these by the Neumann. That's what he should say. He should put a video up right now and say, do not buy any other pair of headphones for critical listening other than the Neumann. End of story. I will not review any more headphones and tell you that you should buy them unless they are better than the Neumann. And he should go back and re-review all the critical listening headphones that he's ever reviewed and told people to buy and say, those headphones do not apply anymore. Don't buy those headphones. Buy the Neumann. End of story. That's what he should do. If he was a fair reviewer, if he was actually in it for accuracy and honesty and being upfront. Am I, am I alleging that Zeus is not being honest? No, I'm not saying that he's not being honest, but I'm saying that he's misleading people. I think that, I think it's, it's 
tantamount to misleading somebody when you say, I, I have this particular car. This car I'm trying to sell you, it's only $500, but it's the best car you can have. It's better than that Mercedes sitting there. Uh, it, it's better than the Porsche sitting over there. It's better than the Honda Civic that's sitting over there. This, this car is the one I drive every day. It's, it's fantastic in every way. It, it gets you from A to B in a smooth way, and it lets you hear the road, really hear it. This is a great, ha this is a great car. Fantastic. Oh, oh, tell me more about it. Oh, blah, 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 blah. But let me, by the way, let me tell you about this other car, though. This other Honda, blue Honda Civic, it's twice the price, and it it's not as, but it's, you should definitely buy this. What? So you've got a used car salesman that says, buy the, fi the $500 car is a great car. But you should spend $1,000 as well and get the other one, too. That's what Zeos does. And that's the problem of being so emphatic about a particular product and saying, this is the best. This is the best. Reviewers should shut the hell up. Stop being so emphatic about any product. You bury yourself when you say that. You mislead people when you say that. Yes, I understand people have a, a very short attention span. I've been told that. And people just want to get to it. Tell me what's the best. You know what? If they want to know what the best is, I will. I, I can throw out several items and say, go buy them, all of them. Buy all of them. They're all the best. Are you going to do that? Of course not. You, you want to know, end of day, at the end of the day, what is the one thing I should really invest my money in? That's not the right question for you to ask somebody else. That's an opinion that you're asking them for. And if you take it just as an opinion, there's no problem. But if you take it as rule, as that person is God and they're telling you this is it, then you are going to set yourself up for disappointment. You don't have the same ears. You don't have the same sensibilities. You don't have the same experience. You don't have the same equipment. You don't have the same music, whatever. And reviewers cater to that. Like Zeos, he caters to it. He doesn't give a care. He, 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 he literally could not care less. He's selling you the, the Neumann, and he's going to sell you, continue to sell you other headphones. Even though, in his personal opinion, the Neumann may be better. But if the Neumann are that good, if the Neumann are better than, than the top-of-the-line headphones for reference, <coughs> excuse me, literally top of the line reference class headphones, better than that, then he needs to say, no more reference class headphones. Don't even bother buying those. Don't even consider it. It is the Neumann you should go for, period. This is it. You may have to spend, save a little bit more money to get the Neumann, but get the Neumann and don't get anything else. Don't even think about getting anything else. That's what he should say. And he should stop reviewing reference class headphones. But he's not going to do that. You know he's not going to do that. I know he's not going to do that. And he knows he's not going to do that. This is bait and switch. If this doesn't cause you pause, let alone worry or concern, if this doesn't cause you pause, then I don't know what will. You are you're talking about an individual who simply is disconnected from reality. He, sim he simply can't control himself. He is perfectly entitled to his opinion. He's perfectly entitled to say, I don't think that the A20s are really all that much better than Neumann. He is entitled to say that, and that is a valid personal opinion. But that's all it is. It's a valid personal opinion. But if he's putting the emphasis to his conclusion... And he's saying, as a reviewer of headphones, this is my conclusion. Then he should stop reviewing any other headphones of this nature. All right? Otherwise, he's a used car salesman. Sells you one thing and turns around and says, ah, that's not good enough. You should buy the other one.
Uh, the more I think about Zeos, the more irritated I become, which is why I stopped thinking about Zeos and I've stopped watching his videos. The benefit to Zeos is that he does get a lot of stuff. He, he, he gets items that I would never know about in any other way, but I hate watching his videos because, first of all, they're full of irrelevant nonsense for the first 30 minutes of his video. And second, he talks about stuff that is not really all that important about the experience. He can't explain what he's talking about in any definitive way. He doesn't really do any particular tests. He gives you conclusions after he's tested off camera, who knows for how long. He walks around wearing the headphone you know, for several days and he, does, he gives you your, his opinion. He says that he randomly tested the particular pair of headphones by giving it to a friend for five or ten minutes and, let, and they say it was fantastic without doing a control test. It, it, that's not how you're supposed to do it. If you're going to be a reviewer, actually review the goddamn product. Stop sitting there and wasting everybody's time. Now, you might say, dude, you're wasting my time. Yeah, but that's my shtick now. So I've, I've gotten used to it. You should too. But when you're charging people, when you're demanding money from people, go to my Patreon, pay me 5 to $10, buy my merchandise. For $25, you can get a T-shirt. With my... With my logo, whether you like the logo or not, I, I ain't saying. Buy it. Come on, why don't you buy it? Buy it. Buy it. Support me. Despite the fact that all these companies send me all this stuff for free. Support me. I need it. That's what he's saying. He's demanding money. He's not paying for the products. And he's shilling. I... <laughs> You get a different perspective about things when you have to pay your own money. When you have to think about finances, when you have to think about pros and cons, is it really worth putting money into this particular item? And how much more am I getting if I spend more? If I'm getting more. Is this really worth it? I mean, let's get down to brass tacks. That's the type of analysis normal people do. Zeos apparently doesn't really do those types of analyses because he gets the stuff for free. Either the company send it to him for free and he has to return it or he gets to keep it and then he gets to sell it on his you know, garage sale, whatever the hell he does. Or he gets money from Patreon. And who knows how much money he's getting from Patreon? I don't check. I don't really care. But who knows how much he gets it? Out of those 146,000 subscribers, how many of them pay him? Now, he's mentioned that in the $10 tier, he's got like 30, 40 people who do that. I, I think that's what he said. I may be wrong. But that's a, that's a significant amount of money that's coming in every month. I... Ugh. So I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you people. If you guys give me money every month, give me $10 a month, I will tell you whatever you want to hear. Doesn't matter how ridiculous, doesn't matter how illogical, doesn't matter if it doesn't really pan out with my test. I will tell you whatever you want to hear just to keep getting your money. Pay me $10 a month and I promise to give you news every time that makes you happy. How about that deal? Would you do it? If you, do, if you would do it, uh, I do have a Patreon set up. I just haven't linked to it because I haven't really decided whether I want to do it. I don't, you know... I'm not convinced that that's the right way to do it, but I've saved the spot just in case someday. Uh, and I'll send you that link. You, you can just immediately start giving me, well, give it to me on PayPal. Cash. Unmark $1 bills would be fantastic. If you can just send, <laughs> unmark $1 bills. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, come on now. It, it's, it's dumb. It's stupid. But that's what he dis intends to do. And everybody else follows Zeos like he is... He, he is the shepherd, and we are all the lamb. DMS follows him. Metal 571 follows him. Joshua Fuller follows him. It's like, everybody, do your own damn thing. Stop following this clown. He is not that good. And I only say he's a clown because he acts like a clown. I'm not saying anything about his personality. I'm, he sounds like a fairly intelligent individual who has a lot of experience. Um, but he acts like a clown. He acts like a buffoon. If that's, if that's the character he wants to portray, that's perfectly fine. But, come on. He's not really giving you a truthful analysis. He's not. And if tomorrow he uploads another video 
and he says, this is an analytical headphone, and you should, yeah, you can go out and buy this. Stop. Because the, the Neumann are the best. You should go out and say, do not buy this company's product because it's not as good as the Neumann. And let's see if the companies keep giving him products. But he ain't going to say that. Not going to happen, huh? All right. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I ended this on a kind of a sour note, but I'm glad I didn't start it with a sour note. At least we did the test. Have a wonderful day. It's almost 6 o'clock in the morning. i got to go work out. Take care of yourselves. It's hump day. You'll get through it. It'll be Friday quick enough, and then it'll be Saturday, and you'll be awash in warmth and, uh, and Saturday good feelings. It's not a real thing, but you know what I mean. Have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon.